Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we're fueled by the spirits of Nintendo podcasts that died swimming upstream. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about the news from the week, including everything out of the Pokemon Presents. And then on Thursday, we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. But Mark, in the meantime, how are you doing? I'm doing great, but Patrick, a better question. How are you mm. doing today, your birthday my of birthday. all days? That's Happy right. 25th. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, it is my 25th birthday, Mark. That's a, that's a filthy lie. You couldn't pay me to be 25 again. 27, maybe. <laughs> 27, maybe. 27's all right um it's uh uh thank you mark i i appreciate the the uh the happy birthday i'm sure as we are we are recording this of course in the past on the uh, day before my birthday um and so i'm certain that i will be having a, a delightful birthday itself that's all uh and if not you can just lie about it yeah and uh, i mean i probably i that's i probably will <laughs> Um, Mark, before we get into anything, uh, I did, I did just want to bring up briefly, I know you haven't watched it yet, but we finally have, uh, gotten this, uh, new Spider-Man trailer. Yeah, that's right. But I have not watched it. I, I didn't even, watch it I didn't yet. even, yeah. I haven't even seen the leaks yet. And usually well, I'm just like salivating for like yeah. the l- smallest tidbit of information. Well, you've been busy. You've been in the middle of, the, of a move. You were mm-hmm. traveling. Like it's, it, it, it can be tough to stay on top of the juicy, juicy leaks. Um, but so, you know, I think this is uh, we're like pretty much confirmed at this point that like, this is a multiverse story possibility of like, uh, characters from previous Spider-Man franchises in this movie. Um, and like, it, it seems like it's, it's one of those things where you're like, Oh wow. Like Marvel really going all in on Mm -hmm. like multiverse stuff, like how ballsy. Um, but in re I was thinking about it and it's like the smartest thing Sony could do because like it makes their Spider-Man movies relevant again. There was a moment during all of the like hypothesizing and leaks and stuff where I was like, oh, I should watch the first three Spider-Man movies and the two Amazing Spider-Man movies. I haven't thought that in like a decade, Mark. Yeah. Well, especially those Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah, they're Do, rough. What is, I know, and it's, it is really smart because when you're saying that, you're like, wow, that's so like inventive and everything. Which, like, it's fun, but it's also, like, perfectly timed for yes. the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man nostalgia cycle. Because it's been 20 years since those movies came out. I think exactly 20 years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, like, it, it's time for us to be like, oh, yeah, we loved those movies or yeah. whatever. Yep. Um, so we can be excited about the new movie because it's connected to the old thing that we love. <laughs> we can go back and watch the old things that we loved and even watch the things that we didn't like because now they're, like important to the i don't know it seems i i bet i wonder if all of the multiversal stuff uh was driven by sony if they were like look you marvel you can keep spider-man you can keep playing with him but you need to make our old movies as relevant as your old movies well because this is it right like theoretically this is the end of the uh deal that sony has with spider-man and look i know that this is not a marvel podcast (laughs) (laughs) I recognize it, but we're going. We're going. We're in it. We're going. Yeah. I mean, I th- I think uh, this is sort of like the extension, right? Like the right. Uh, Far from Home was supposed to be the the end of uh, the the deal, and then they something happened, and then they were able to make one more Spider Man movie. And I wonder if that one more thing was like open up the multiverse, mm. Sh- bring brings bring our old Sony Spider Man into the mcu and then all of it can be connected all of it counts and then every time someone does a full marvel rewatch they're gonna have to watch all the spider-man I didn't even too. think about that i didn't even think about that that would be bringing like those spider-men into like the mcu wow 
Yeah. So I'm just I'm just what saying. What a time to be alive. What a time to what be alive. What a time Mark. to be a Disney stockholder. <laughs> that none of us are. Um, he, here's here's something that you could hold. However, my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. All you gotta do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Com. And give us a mailing address where we can, where y- your hands are, so I could send you my copy, and you could hold my copy in your hands, put it in your Switch, play it for as long as you want, send it back. It costs you nothing. One thing that might happen is there may be a multiversal copy of Untitled Goose Game in there uh, that'll draw you back to all the previous Untitled Goose Game movies. <laughs> uh, but th- that's okay. Look, sometimes the Sonic Forces is an Untitled Goose, and that's just as good. Yeah, and if also um, if you've been kidnapped by the mob and they cut off your hands and mailed it to somebody um, to prove like that you're still alive or they have you, I actually don't know what that proves. But uh, if that has happened, you can still you should send us the mailing address of where your hands are not because you probably don't know where your hands are if that happened oh, to you. Okay, but if someone sends me an address to where their hands are but uh-huh. they are not yeah i'm not to go i'm not gonna go looking for their hands all i'm gonna do is send them a copy of a video game yeah that's true. i don't know that it's helpful it's not helpful right okay i mean yeah that's fair i just i'm just putting it out there as a possibility yeah. Yeah. um another thing you can do with your hands is leave us a five-star review on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcast it helps people find the show this is the perfect opportunity for you to wish patrick a happy 25th birthday Thank you to Super Nintendo Dudes and Shadachu8 for leaving us five-star reviews this past week. We really appreciate it. And if you leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast, it doesn't have to be on Apple Podcasts, send us an email, shoot us a DM on Twitter, let us know. We'd love to shout you out on the show. We really genuinely appreciate it when you do. Yeah, and if if the platform that you use does not allow for reviews or uh, reviews in five stars, if it's out of 10, if it's out of four, if it's just a fave or a like or a thumbs up, whatever, um, let us know. We'll shout you out as well. We appreciate all of that. Um, Mark, one more thing we appreciate. Uh, October, the month of October, is Game & Watch Month. We are dedicating a month of programming to the Nintendo hardware platform, the Game & Watch. Um, so we know a little bit about the Game & Watch. We've got, uh, or I've got the Super Mario Game & Watch, but we're going to have to do a lot of sort of uh, digging and researching and conceptualizing to even uh, have an idea of what we're talking about in October. If anyone has any uh, direction they would like to point us in or any uh, favorite um, games that they want to shout out, uh, let us know. Email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And otherwise, just get ready to talk about Game & Watch, man. Like, you know, dial your, your vision back down to just, uh, you know, dual tone, black and white. Um, get used to like two frames of animation total. Um, we are talking Game & Watch. I'm, I'm really excited. Like you said, Patrick, this is something, Game & Watch is not something I'm really familiar with. I never owned any of the hardware or anything like that. So uh, I always like when we do these deep dives into stuff I'm not familiar with, like Kid Icarus Month. So I think a Game & Watch Month is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, also, Mark, we got an email from Xander. Xander has written in a couple times before. He writes, hey, guys, what's up? Uh, I love your show and just finished the Modernizing the Zelda Games episodes. Um, I have a question for you guys. What would you do to Super Mario 64 to modernize it and why? By the way, five stars. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Xander. Thank you, Xander. You inside an email. Uh, I think that helps people find the show, right? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it, it makes me feel great. Um, Mark, what do you think? What would you do to modernize Super Mario 64? So I most recently played Super Mario 64 when Super Mario 3D All-Stars came out last year for Mario's 35th anniversary. And I really struggled with it. Um, and it's because of the camera. And what I would do to modernize Mario 64 is I would make the camera uh, act more like a modern video game camera with a little bit more control. I, I think for what it was at the time, it's really remarkable. And there are parts of it that hold up really well. Um, but just like when it gets stuck on geometry or, you know, it starts yeah. like, it is always trying to center, like be behind Mario, which I think like does make a certain amount of sense for this first like 3D platforming game, give people a perspective, like one fixed perspective that they're familiar with, but it made it really difficult to go back to. And that that's really, I think all I'd, really do to that game 
It, it is interesting though, because like it goes back and forth between having that like sort of fixed camera behind Mario's head, and occasionally like choosing a really dramatic like high <laughs> yeah, angle yeah, from totally. far away, where you're like, I can't control Mario like this at all. Some like um, it's like Bowser's security yeah. cam footage or something. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I, I so I I think that like modernizing the camera controls is definitely like a way to approach that. I would want there to be an option to keep classic camera controls mm -hmm. um uh for me man there is a version of this game which is theoretically great um but hampered by even uh like worse controls um on the ds right oh like, that yeah has yeah the the four different playable characters in the form of luigi yoshi and wario um like give me all of that uh and you know uh make it all um make it all hd give me widescreen uh and also like give me some playable women like i know where i know we're rescuing peach but like i don't know throw rosalina in there or something um like as long as we're adding characters let's go nuts let's add a bunch of characters uh but yeah otherwise like i think basic bones of that game are uh phenomenal and i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to mess with too much i feel like i don't really appreciate enough that wario is a fully playable character in a complete 3d mario game like, you could yeah. just play as Wario. I owned the... Did you own the Mario 64 DS? Yeah, totally. It's it's virtually unplayable, though. Yeah, I could not... I was really you, excited, but no, yeah, I could too. not... Did like, you ever play with that weird thumbstick-like thing that you could put on the screen? No, I don't even remember that. Different from, like, the Metroid Hunters thing? Yes, so different oh. from, like, the boat control. Um, It was a... Or no, no, maybe it was similar to the Metroid Hunters thing, where it was, like... Uh, a suction cup thing that you put on the bottom screen um, that you could then manipulate with your thumb. So it almost made it into like a, a an analog thumbstick. Oh, interesting. My memory. No, I don't. I did not have that. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, My me memory is that the Metroid Hunters thing was like a kind of like an accessory that you put on your thumb that had almost like the um the point of a stylus on like the thumb oh, so that way yeah, you could sure. use your thumb on the screen like a stylus so you could control like the where the camera's moving <laughs> right, um right. yeah <laughs> lots of weird rubbery like accessories to try to solve the camera problem on the Nintendo DS yeah, and, uh, yes, and uh, none of them worked. No, <laughs> um, Mark, Mark. That also just makes me think of the uh, the Guitar Hero. Oh it yeah, on on tour, world tour. No, not world tour. World tour was like a main one. Maybe maybe it was on tour or something like that. That was the uh, the DS version that had a pick that was the stylus. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was on tour. I think because yeah. because that also had. The like um, accessory that you plugged into the Game Boy Advance port at the bottom, right? Right. So you yeah. could like uh, almost hold it like a, uh, I don't know, some sort of instrument where you hold things like that. Yeah, like a melodica, or I guess even kind of like a trumpet, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just had, I think it had four buttons on it. Maybe it was only big enough to I have. I think it was four. Three. But man, do I miss? Oh, like was this was that stuff a little like junk? Yeah, kind of. Do I do I have nostalgia for it? Yes. Gosh darn it, I hate it, but I do. <laughs> um, but so yeah, that's what we would do to modernize Super Mario 64. All right, Mark, let's get into what we've been playing this week. Mark, I think we've got a little bit of uh, overlap in the series of game that we uh, both spent a, a fair amount of time with this weekend or this this last week um but i i uh, why, why don't we start with you sure and then we'll and then we'll move on to uh what i've been playing yes that feels right because um i ha have gone back to 2017 2018 i actually can't remember when warioware gold was released so like patrick said i was traveling this past week and um i feel like we talk about this every time either you or i travel where it's like, which device am I going to bring with me? And yes. it's always the 3DS because I can just throw it in my bag. Uh, I don't care what happens to it. Um, and nothing will happen to it because it's like, you know, like a turtle shell on that thing. Yeah. It's a tiny little brick and like you're never like pieces of it aren't going to like come off. Um, you don't need like a separate case for it. You just close it and it's yeah. ready to go. One thing I do miss, though, is uh, when I was 
I, I guess, you know, maybe five or six years ago, actually probably longer than that because the Switch has been out for like that long at this point. But yeah. maybe like 10 years ago, um, when the only time I would ever get Street Pass Mies is on my 3DS is when I was traveling. And so that was always the fun part of like taking my 3DS with me on a trip. And I do miss that nowadays. But all of that is to say that I was playing WarioWare Gold, um, going back to WarioWare Gold, a game that when it came out, I put some time into, but did not like finish. Uh, for whatever reason, it was difficult for me to get in the groove of the WarioWare micro games. But man, I, I was so happy to go back to it because it really is the, a great send-off for what WarioWare was. And I feel like it's kind of, uh, you know, because it is a collection of many of those micro games from all of the WarioWare games before. And being on the Nintendo 3DS was perfect because it had like the gyroscope so you could like t tilt it and it had the touchscreen and it had the microphone and it had the, yeah, I guess the microphone so you could like blow into it and make noises, right. like all that kind of stuff that I feel like in this next iteration of WarioWare, they have found a way to make it new with this multiplayer element. And so it was a fun send-off in WarioWare Gold to just, like, um, uh, I forgot how much I like the characters. I forgot yeah. how much, like, the little vignettes between the, um, min the micro games are. It was just really fun to go back to and play for a little bit. Yeah, WarioWare Gold, it also should not be undersold, like, how complete of a game it is. Like, uh, Mark, you were saying that, like, it brings back all of the, you know, that it's a, a, a send-off and, like, a collection of all the micro games, but it's also bundled like a classic WarioWare game, right? Like, it gives you um, a, a silly little narrative, it gives you all of these different, like, little quest lines that you're um, progressing on, and, like, you're collecting coins so you can buy more, like, mini games outside of the micro games. Like, it is a complete package. It is not just, like, a greatest hits. It is its own complete game made up of the best parts of all the previous games yeah and that's a really good way of selling it because it doesn't um well first of all the original one came out in i think like 2003 so you know i i actually don't think I, the first wario game i played was the ds one and so a lot of the stuff yeah any element from the um uh the installments before the ds one are completely new to me anyways and yeah. there are so many little like micro games in all of the games that there were a few that I would occasionally would be like, oh yeah, I remember the, you know, like uh, trying to unspool the toilet paper roll as fast as I could right. and that kind of stuff. But there were a ton that were maybe old, but are essentially new to me. Yeah. It's also great when you can set that game on, because th there are like the, the sort of like three distinct like flavors of game, right? That are like button controls, touchscreen controls, or tilt controls. Um, and so it's it's fun to play within each one of those like different categories, but there are also uh, times when you can just be like, no, shuffle, give me whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's when like the true chaos begins, where like you've got the stylus in one hand and you're like trying to push the buttons, and then you're yeah. like, oh no, I've got to like tilt the thing. Um, it it becomes true chaos. So not to um, uh, steal your thunder, but I didn't realize that there was a demo for Wario or Get It Together coming out. Is that something that we knew about beforehand, or did they kind of like surprise us with this? Yeah, this was a surprise drop, I think, on Thursday or Friday of this week, um, or of last week. Uh, there is a demo for WarioWare Get It Together on your Nintendo Switch um, uh, ahead of the game coming out on uh, September 10th, I think. Um, yeah, uh, so the, you, can, you can download this game, and it's got uh, access to, I believe, seven characters. Um, and uh, a good handful of uh, micro games. Um, it also gives you a little bit of the uh, like premise of the the story of the game that Wario has finished his video game and uh, is about to show it to everyone. But everyone, of course, gets sucked into the video game, um, and they all get turned into like cute chibi versions of themselves um, as they get sucked into the game. The game that Wario is uh, is holding it is a um, it looks like an uh, a, sorry, I'm thinking it is. It looks like the Game Boy Advance, but it is a uh, solid purple. It has a mustache, um, and <laughs> it has a thumbstick on the left, 
and one button on the right, and the button has the poop emoji on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, that there is a continuing saga in these WarioWare games. I don't remember it being... Like, this sounds like it is a kind of a direct continuation of the plot, for lack of a better term, of WarioWare yes. Gold. And I don't remember that being a thing before um, that WarioWare is like a video game developer. But that's really funny that that's what the premise is. Yeah, so the, the way the actual game works... Oh, so first of all, I, I, I spent uh, you know some time playing it by myself um, on Saturday. Um, the individual like slices of the game that it you know, gives you to play, there's not like too much content. But so much of what's fun about WarioWare is in like the sort of replaying and sort of like trying to get more familiar with it anyway. Um, so I, I played maybe like an hour or two by myself, and then Sarah and I were playing for a while um, multiplayer, and the multiplayer is fun, it's chaotic, it is uh, testing your ability to communicate with someone, and sometimes the communication is just like, no, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> really, because our, our, so there's co-op, but then is there also like competitive or are, it's all co-op? So it's it, in the demo, it's all co-op. Mm. Um, but, you know, the, the way that the co-op works, it like you, you can get in each other's way very easily or like, uh, sure. you know, s- stop each other from like progressing in the game. It's overcooked. And, you know, it's yeah. In many ways, it's overcooked, but it's overcooked where you have seven seconds to figure it out, <laughs> communicate what needs to be done and then do it. Um, so like it's, it's absolutely brutal. I love, love, love the new hook of. Um, you're playing all the micro games by having like a little avatar inside the game um, and like moving them around. And I further love that uh, each of the individual characters that they make you play as have different uh, movements and different abilities, um, even though they're all like put in the same game. So in uh, it, just in the demo, the seven characters that you have access to are uh wario who uh, has a jetpack so he like flies around freely and can like you know wario dash into things um cricket the like kind of ninja guy who um he moves and you can jump by pushing a button and he can jump very high um 18 volt who does not move but throws uh like projectiles from his head at whatever angle you want to uh shoot them at um anna and cat who are ninjas that don't stop jumping so they bounce the whole time uh, and they can throw samurai stars. One throws to the left, the other one throws to the right. Um, there's Orbulon, who's the alien who like flies around in a little uh, uh, <laughs> uh, like UFO thing, and he can like suck things up in there. Um, and then there's uh, Mona, who is riding a scooter, and the scooter never stops, so you have to like steer it around. Uh, and the scooter will stop if you throw a boomerang. And when the boomerang is out, you control it, and Mona stays in one place. So I. Th- think that was all seven of the characters um and like so you it's is another thing where like you can either select your party of three and you kind of get to know how they all work or you can be like shuffle give me all oh. the characters uh and just embrace the absolute chaos that that brings that sounds so much fun i'm gonna have to check it out i can't believe that this game comes out on september 10th it's so soon so soon yeah basically two weeks and then um, that that's here and then we're like in the one month countdown to uh, Metroid Dread. Yeah, Wild. it's very wow. exci- it's it's very exciting. Um, we also uh, if from from playing through the demo, we got uh, uh, to look at a lot more um, game modes that are coming out in the full version of WarioWare. Get it together, um, you know, including like the full story mode. There are variety packs that just like throw mini games at you. There is a daily uh, a mode called the Daily Grind, which is like a four player side scrolling. Uh, like you're trying to get coffee to, you know, back to the <laughs> office or whatever, um, which seems super chaotic. There's a uh, an air hockey mode where you play micro games every time someone scores. Um, I mean, it, it just seems like the game is loaded with other ways to uh, play mini and micro games. I am uh, and, and also that this game is not a sixty dollar release. It is a fifty dollar release. Um, something I realized when I was picking up the wow. demo. So this it's is all just it's full of surprises. I, I'm very excited for this thing. Yeah, I didn't realize this fifty bucks. Do you know is can you play multiplayer online or is it all local? Unclear at this point. Um there are ways to interact with other players in uh like little lobbies, I, mm-hmm. I believe. Um 
Although I may be confusing that now. Now that I think about it, I think that's I'm saying something for the Pokemon Presents. Oh. That might not be real. <laughs> <laughs> I this was one of the um most fun surprises to me in Nintendo's E3 presentation. Like I legitimately like yelped with excitement when this was revealed and so yeah. uh i'm so happy that warioware is getting a new like full entry um because i wasn't entirely sure that that was ever going to happen and so um yeah man i'm really excited for this uh one, one last thing i want to say about it before we uh move on uh is that playing as the characters um made me feel more connected to them as characters than i normally do um I just said all of their names, right? Like, I'm not reading them off of a, a sheet here. Um, I just remembered them because I was controlling them. They all felt different. Um, and I feel like this is going to do wonders for the WarioWare characters in just like the Nintendo fan zeitgeist. Mark, I'm going to propose that we rank them at some point, probably yes. when we talk about this game for real. Um, but like, yeah, they're they're cool and they've always been cool but just the ability to like play as them is going to do a lot for their visibility i think yeah it seems like such a smart evolution on like mm -hmm. the warioware formula um yeah i'll have to check out the demo um mark i insist that you do did you play anything else on the uh on the 3ds or mostly just warioware yeah mostly just warioware i find when i'm traveling it's hard for me to be like focused on like a deep dive game so in that way like the micro step was perfect because i could like fiddle with it for a while put it down focus on something else and then come back to yeah. it. yeah yep i mean that's why pocket card jockey is the perfect <laughs> <laughs> nintendo game um all right mark that's enough about what we've been playing this week let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week <laughs> thursday august 26th Spelunky and Spelunky 2 are released on the Nintendo Switch. Um, Spelunky is, at this point, a classic in its own right, but when it came out, I think in 2008 on uh, the Xbox, it was, a, it was like a throwback game that was taking elements of like 2D side-scrollers and was one of those first roguelike, um, kind of like an early part of the roguelike renaissance. And Spelunky has taken a, on a life of its own. It is coming to Nintendo Switch. And then the sequel is also coming on August 26th. And then on August 27th, Friday, No More Heroes 3 is released on the Switch. And Baldo the Guardian Owls is released on the Switch eShop. Um, no More Heroes 3, I don't know how much of an introduction we need to do for this game. It's from Suda51. Um, the original game was on the Wii, and there was a sequel on the Wii and PlayStation 2. This third game uh, follows... What was that? What was the, uh, um, the like, mid-quill type thing? Like, oh, spin-off yeah. game that came out the a few years ago? The Interquill. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was called Travis Strikes Again. Yes. Right? Yes, or Travis Strikes Back. One, or, one of those. I think it's again. I, I don't yeah. think it's uh, the Empire Strikes Back exactly. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's I think that close. is probably. I think that's probably right. Um, so yeah, No More Heroes three coming to the Switch, and then Baldo the Guardian Owls. This is one that was shown off at an Indie World showcase, and it's one of two really like Studio Ghibli esque games. This one is like an action RPG. Um, it looks really cute. I'm interested in seeing the reviews, but yeah, I would say for August closing out strong compared to uh the earlier weeks of august i would say yeah I, i'm very interested to see what the reviews are like for no more heroes 3 um i i know that the the first two games are held in pretty high regard um despite the fact that they've got and maybe even partially because of the fact that they've got um this like absolutely off the wall sense of humor um that is like you know childish but like as energetic as humanly possible so there's like some redeeming quality to it but also i think those games were you know coming out in like 2008 or whatever right, so yeah like the the bar for what you accept in a funny video game is was different than it is now yeah totally totally yeah i played the first one it wasn't um i remember liking it i remember i remember being in my apartment it being a kajillion degrees and so <laughs> like trying to like doing the motion controls having like my palms be super sweaty and um just not being able to beat the final boss and just being so like hot and frustrated 
but eventually, eventually being able to do it. Uh, do we know, is this one also relying on motion controls in the same way that the first two were? Probably not, right? Oh, yeah. I actually, I don't know. I haven't been following No More Heroes 3 that closely. I would, um, yeah, I, I really don't know. That's a great question. Well, we will uh, look into that and probably talk more about it next week. All right, Mark, let's close out the new releases. Which brings us to a regular segment on our show. It is time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So... For the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I'll talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Uh, Mark, we have gotten a suggestion from Dominic. Uh, Dominic writes, Ben and Jerry's. So let's talk about Ben and Jerry's. I, um, Patrick, you, I would love to know your experience, your feelings on Ben and mm. Jerry's. Because I think of Ben and Jerry's as like a premium grocery store ice cream. Like, if yeah. you, you know, want to go deluxe at the grocery store, you're eyeing that Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, I, yes. Uh, although I, I feel like that is a part of, like, past me that feels very, like, mm -hmm. college to me, right? Of, like, uh, and may maybe that was just a function of, like, what ice creameries were nearby. Like, right now, if I'm going to go and if I'm going to get ice cream, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out to a, a, a parlor. I'm going to get some scoops. I'm going to support a local business. Um, ben and Jerry's famously from Vermont. Uh, that's about as far away as a business can be from me and still be an American business. So have you lived somewhere where there were like physical Ben and Jerry's locations? Because I never have and so that I'm aware of. And so Ben and Jerry's to me has always been like a grocery store brand, yeah. like not something that I would go and like get from a Ben and Jerry's location. Yeah, there was one in Chicago, I think that we used to go to um but not very often and like you know you, you just go to like a dairy queen and like the the you know and the outing is basically the same but like costs you half as much money so yeah a few months ago i kind of fell down this youtube rabbit hole of old Ooh. of old um clips from the colbert report and uh, i was just remembering the american how, dream yes yes i was just remembering how like funny that show was and um how many like crazy things got named after stephen colbert and yeah like yes the ben and jerry's americone dream ice cream flavor was brought up and i think that will probably be like the pinnacle of ben and jerry's in my mind yeah like totally. uh um when i think of ben and jerry's i think of that like time like the early or i guess like late er the late early 2000s like 2010 yes. Um, it, it is funny to think of like, cause I, I, that was like the first of those, right? Because then there's also like, uh, Jimmy Fallon's late night, late night snack and right. like, you know, other, uh, flavors like that. But I feel like Stephen Colbert was the first and did it as a joke. So like, <laughs> he's automatically like better than everyone else who got a flavor. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. That, uh, was such a dream gig. Yeah. No kidding. Um, the, there was a flavor of Ben and Jerry's ice cream that used that we used to get on campus a lot that was like in the freezer at the um the grill, which was sort of like the uh just like restaurant that we could go to on campus. Um and uh it was the New York Super Fudge Chunk, which, you know, is a, a, a vanilla ice cream with like ribbons of stuff. Um and then also chunks of uh white chocolate and dark chocolate. And the chunks of white chocolate were like large rectangles um large smooth white rectangles um and sarah and i got to calling them the tooth um so because like, <laughs> it it looked like a big weird tooth um and so like when you were uh eating some of it if you got a bite with a tooth in it you're like oh man i got the tooth that's so funny <laughs> i uh ben and jerry's makes me think of those like there's other brands like there's ben and jerry's i think of like burt's bees and like that kind of stuff that started as kind of this mm. like almost like mm -hmm. counterculture type thing and then eventually they get absorbed by like a behemoth corporation like i think ben right. and jerry's is owned by unilever now unilever and <laughs> um you know like burt's bees is owned by clorox like it's like they still have the uh um 
I don't want to say veneer because that makes it seem so insincere, but you know, like they still present themselves as this really kind of like counterculture type thing. Right. And, uh, but you're like, wait, wait a second. There's like genuinely one of the biggest corporations in the world, you know, like controlling you. Yeah. Well, and I mean, any, any product that is made in the, (laughs) in the Atlantic Northeast and which you can buy in any grocery store in Southern California. Like, <laughs> there's, there's nothing granola about that, right? There's That's nothing a great countercultural point. about <laughs> yeah, that. Like, yeah. It's being shipped 3,000 miles. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're you're not, not doing anything good. They're not there. handing it like person to person, like in a hands across <laughs> right, America right. style, you know, uh, show of love. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I appreciate the, like, hyper-liberal bent, and, you know, like, obviously that's uh, where, where I am politically, too. Um, but, you know, there's also some point where you're like, well, okay, I'm also just, I'm also just buying ice cream from you, which, again, <laughs> is why I, would, why I would rather go down the street to, you know, there, there are a couple um, ice cream places really close by. Uh, I've got a Wanderlust, which is a great um, ice cream place, and uh, Magpies, which is a soft serve over here in, in Silver Lake, that are both great. Um, and so I would much rather go to those places. Yeah, and Patrick, get yourself some of those free birthday cones. Ooh, I forgot about free birthday cones. Where do you think I can go to do that? I feel like anywhere if you do puppy dog eyes enough. Oh. Uh, but it's I my birthday. I don't know if you're supposed to do puppy dog eyes in COVID times. <laughs> All right, that's, uh, that's the applause there. Um, Synced up perfectly with a joke. We've never had one that timed out that well. Uh, we were accompanied today by the ensemble at the Musical Instrument, Mu- Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. All right, Mark, let's get into the news. There was a Pokemon Presents video last week, so let's talk about it. First, Mark, I need to know, did you, when, when this video uh, was at six o'clock in the morning, when did you watch it? I watched it over the weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I am interested in what they're showing. I actually think like Pokémon, the new Pokémon Legends game is probably the most likely next entry in the Pokémon franchise that I buy. Yeah. Um and so it was cool to see that. But first, let's start at the beginning. Let's start yep. with the mobile games. We had quite a few updates on uh, the Pokémon mobile games. Also, just a reminder of like how expansive the offerings are on mobile for Pokemon. Um, so there's Pokemon Unite, but, uh, emphasis on Unite, uh, not United, which I'm sure... Uh, That's what you said last week. I you said sure, United last week. <laughs> yes, yes, but is not correct. Um, it is Pokemon Unite. They announced two new Pokemons, uh, Sylveon and Mamoswine. Uh, which, uh, you know, cool for people playing that game. I, uh, Pokemon Unite seems to be amassing an audience and a following, um, which I suppose shouldn't be a surprise. This is the, um, uh, oh, I just lost the, uh, MOBA. MOBA. There we go. Uh, yes. Um, this is, yeah. So very much like League of Legends. Um, so, you know, the, the genre has fans. Um, so, uh, it seems like those fans are showing up and really supporting the game. Yeah. It seems like a really s- potentially very smart mashup of like genre times Pokemon equals potential yeah. success. And a MOBA seems like something that could definitely have legs. Um, I feel Especially like. Especially cause it, it's, uh, it is wait is it currently on mobile or is it uh on switch and coming to mobile i think it is just on switch right now but they did announce previously that it is coming to mobile soon yeah um yeah that'll be huge yeah also pokemon cafe remix has new puzzles and pokemon as cosmetics this is the like uh connect three puzzle game i don't know if it's actually connect three but it's that um sort of that that same sort of mechanic this uh, uh, watching gameplay videos of this looks like chaos to me. I have no, <laughs> I and, and like match three puzzlers usually do look a little bit chaotic, but it doesn't even look like things are like there's just like a jumble of Pokemon faces and like someone draws a line between them and you're like what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, also up next is Pokemon Masters EX. They celebrated their two year anniversary with Dynamax Pokemon and a villainous trainer. 
Yeah, or like villainous trainers, villainous organizations, uh, which is a, a cool like addition. Because this is the game where you take control of trainers from uh, the games and the anime and stuff. Um, and so I guess they've just been doing the heroic trainers for a while, and now they're going to roll out you oh, know, your fun. team rockets and what have you. Yeah, that's fun. And then finally, Pokemon Go, uh, Galarian Pokemon from the Sword and Shield games are coming, but we'll be leaving at the end of the month. And so it's just a short, limited time thing. Well, I mean, for now, right? Like, right. Uh, Pokemon Go is such a, a live um, service game that, like, all that stuff is sort of in flux. Um, cool to see the most recent uh, offerings um, coming to that game, too. More details about upcoming console games were also released. So first up was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Di- Shining Pearl, which are still scheduled for release on November 19th. Um, so some of the features that they showed off during the Pokemon Presents are the Grand Underground, where you mine for fossils, encounter Pokemon that appear nowhere else in the game, place statues in your base, which influence like which Pokemon appear in the Grand Underground. Uh, um, the, let, let's talk about that thing, because I think that's probably the biggest and most interesting like new feature of this game. Um, uh, especially the idea that there are Pokemon that only appear there and don't appear like elsewhere in the game. Um, does that mean what does that mean like are are they pokemon that weren't available like in that generation or cuz uh, like uh, up to that point they had been just uh, increasing the size of the pokédex right it wasn't a um subtractive thing like it is now where they had to like choose you know who belongs in in which pokédex um so what does that mean or is it just like the pokemon that wouldn't appear in uh diamond but are in pearl oh interesting yeah i wish i had the knowledge base to answer that I don't yeah, have I barely had the idea. knowledge base to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't have any idea, but that's a good question. Yeah. Oh, uh, honestly Patrick, we may never know the answer to that. <laughs> that's a great point. Uh th- another new feature is you can decorate your Pokéballs, so changing the effects when you toss them, which uh I think is the first time anything like that has shown up in a Pokémon game. But for the love of God, don't quote me on that. Union rooms where you can interact with other players. Now, this Con- is what I was thinking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> WarioWare. Uh, contest shows, which are like Pokemon dog shows, but also maybe look like they have a rhythm game component. This seems like something I could get into. Yeah. I mean, if it is like Pokemon Drag Race, which it might be, <laughs> um, then maybe we do have to pick up this game. I don't know. Uh, they also showed off new Switch lights, a Switch light. Dialga and Palkia edition that is also that is being released on a, uh, the 5th of November this year. It matches the special edition DSs that came out with the original game. Uh, which is uh, fine and cute and they look, you know, it's uh, you, you gotta, right? You gotta release uh, a console with uh, the legendary Pokemon just on it. I think it's, it's also interesting to me, like, which uh, sis- which games they choose to do special edition light Nintendo Switch lights for and which ones they yes. choose to do like the uh, regular Nintendo Switch special editions for. Because I feel like more often than not, they are the lights. So like we have Pokemon, we got the Animal Crossing one was a special edition light. Or I guess they... No, that no, was no, that no, was, that was a, yeah, I was thinking was of the normal. I was thinking of the 3DS when they did that for um, New Leaf. But yeah, okay, so yeah, but it is interesting. I think Pokemon potentially makes sense, targeted at a younger audience. Um, but well, and an audience that is more used to playing its games in a mobile setting. Oh yeah, right? great point, great point. Yeah. And then, uh, oh yeah, anything else you wanted to talk about? In oh yeah, sorry, Diamond? yes, this, I, 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 put a, I put a note in the news here for, for me to read. Um, I, I, I did see a couple outlets and other people on Twitter um, sort of comparing screenshots um, from the most recent trailer for these games um, with the uh, uh, video from the announcement. And it does seem like the um, like sort of lighting has been improved. The colors are a little bit darker, a little less gem-like, um, and that there's just sort of more depth to everything. Um, I know uh, this game caught some flack when it was originally revealed for um, its look. I don't know that's done like enough really to change the look from what it is uh, you know, because it is like a, a, a chibi sort of like cute looking version of a uh, Pokemon remake. 
Um, but it does seem like there's more depth, uh, more depth of field there, better lighting and, and stuff like that. You know, with uh, with this presentation, there were some pictures released that I don't really know what they are. Are they like, I they didn't seem to be in engine, but they were like promotional photos that showed the kind of like the art style in a more not close up, but just like a different uh, perspective. And it like the art style I thought was really cute. But for some reason, yeah. it doesn't really translate that well to like the over the head perspective, probably because you're just like looking at like the tops of people's heads. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you got to cheat it like um, Link Between Worlds did, right? Where like the the Link model is like tilted as he's walking so that you can actually like see the, the whole body. Um, but yeah, so those games come out pretty soon. And then... We got some more information, the most information we've gotten so far about Pokemon Legends. Arceus. Arceus. I feel like I... They're say, yeah, they're, they're saying Arceus in, okay, in, Arceus. in the trailer. Yeah. yeah, I think I've been saying Arceus since the beginning of time, but now, um, just like I will never say Pokemon United again, I will now have Pokemon <laughs> Legends Arceus. There you go. You've uh, evolved. Forever. Yes. Uh, so this game is also... Uh, Still on track to be released January 22nd, 2022. Um, they showed off a, a little bit of how it's different from traditional Pokemon games. So the trainer takes damage when attacked by Pokemon. Which so cool. Is, yeah, new. You enter Pokemon versus Pokemon combat seamlessly by tossing a ball at a wild Pokemon. There's two attack styles, strong and agile. And uh, it determines the turn order, which is displayed on screen like Final Fantasy X. And then, Which I, I think that's so dope. Uh, like, you know, the, the, the Pokemon turn-based combat is so... Uh, it, it's so old, it has changed so little. Um, and even having something as simple as, you know, uh, giving the turn order, not even like an active time battle like Final Fantasies, uh, you know, 4 through 9, um, but like going right to the Final Fantasy X thing of like actually seeing when your character would be able to go again based on whether you're using the strong and slow version of the attack or the uh, fast and weak version um, is, is really cool and could lead to some like genuinely interesting uh, like strategic choices to make uh, kind of on the fly. There's also special new evolutions. And Patrick, I just mentally cannot handle trying to pronounce these uh, names. Yeah, I got you. So I got I'm going gotcha. to leave it to you. Okay, so there is uh th there are two uh rideable uh new evolutions of Pokemon. There is the Basca Legion, which is a uh oh I, I think I think it's Bas Basque so something like that is what it what it evolves from. Um this is a ghost fish powered by the souls of other uh dead <laughs> Basquools who died swimming upstream. Um and then there's the uh wire deer, uh which is a, an evolution of some deer Pokemon. Uh, that you uh, ride around, like, running up mountains and stuff. Uh, it's a cool, you know, we saw, like, the rideable Pokemon um, that were just rideable, that weren't, like, capturable in um, Sun and Moon. Uh, and I thought that was a, a really cool, like, application of uh, that kind of thing. In an open-world setting, like what we're going to get in uh, Legends Arceus, uh, that seems even cooler, um, especially if it means that that's how you can traverse the water or like get up mountains that you wouldn't normally be able to uh it seems really cool totally um and then i'll let you do this other part too okay great uh and then there there are also uh hisuian forms so uh the the land of Sinnoh is, or the region of Sinnoh is called uh hisu uh in the uh you know ancient past when the game takes place um so we're seeing uh variations like we saw in the Alola region or the Galarian region. Um, so there's a Hisuian Growlithe and a Hisuian Braviary, but I'm sure that we will see more. Um, the Growlithe has uh, like big furry curls over its eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks adorable. I'm way into it. Uh, I, I, this is a fun little thing that like Pokemon has landed on where it's like, I oh, know we, we can do variations of the Pokemon yes, that already exist. Fun. It is fun. Uh, even if it's uh, occasionally there's like it has another type or like has access to different moves but honestly if it's just aesthetically different that's how i enjoy <laughs> pokemon most anyway um so yeah i'm i'm into it it's also very exciting that like this rcs game which is like a maybe this is a a, a new way that they're going to make pokemon games but it feels right now like it's a spin-off right mm -hmm. 
um, that they would be introducing new Pokemon and new like variations on Pokemon for this game is uh, sort of making me think that this is a model they're going to do again in the future. Because you don't see like a new Pokemon in Pokemon Snap or like uh, right. uh, Pokemon Tournament or whatever. Yeah, you know, for uh, the thing it makes me think of is like with the when Nintendo revealed the Nintendo DS and they're like, this is our third pillar. And then yes. the Nintendo DS took off and they're like, just kidding. We are like, you know, like this is our thing now. And yeah, I Game could, Boy who? <laughs> yeah. And so I could see them with these, this Pokemon legends. Um, they have that option, right? Where it's like, well, yeah. if this takes off, then we can pivot to it. Uh, or we can maintain like both types of games. But if it doesn't, then we can just pretend that it was like a one-off like spin-off and we, you know, don't have to talk about it ever again without damaging the main Pokemon brand. But um, you know, after I think the trailer looked really cool. And, you know, afterwards I saw a lot of talk online, you know, like calling it Pokemon of the Wild and that sort of thing. But it was right. all in a way where people were still excited about it. Like this Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it it is very interesting because like this is also this is the Game Freak developed Pokemon game, right? Like the uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl remakes are being done by uh, a- another studio. Um, so like it it does seem like this is where uh Pokemon and like the sort of like you know masthead for the brand is headed. Um, so I and I think I think people are behind like people are excited for it. Um, and like it doesn't. I I know there's also like a, a the negative component of the Pokemon fan base that is going to complain about like whatever Pokemon has to offer, and they're not totally wrong. Like there are ways that uh, the game should be. Key. It is the most profitable entertainment brand on the planet. Um, so like, should the games be uh maybe a little bit more polished? Uh, possibly. <laughs> um, but they're not, and you know they they come out of a pedigree of handheld gaming, and like, yeah, we they've been on consoles for a little while now. But like that's not that's not where they you know they 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 live there now they were not born there they are the anti Bane right Bane was born in the darkness uh Pokemon was born on handheld um and so like I think it just takes a long time to uh change those priorities and uh to even well I guess it's the same thing I was gonna say uh, changing what they value in uh, the kind of games that they make um. So, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, this seems like a step in that direction, though. I think so, but I think Pokemon is always going to be small steps. And I feel mm-hmm. like this is a pretty big leap Conservative. For, yeah. Poke- for, like, the Pokemon company, for what a Pokemon game is. And I feel like, I also feel like I know that they have partners for the majority of the mobile games. But I feel like on mobile, like, Pokemon, I feel like the Pokemon company tries a lot of stuff. There yeah. is a lot of different Pokemon games out there. The main games are like a thing or have been a thing um, for a very long time. And, you know, you were saying that it takes a while for HD development. And I think that's true. We definitely saw, you know, Nintendo get caught with their pants down a little bit in the Wii U era. But um, I also think like performance and graphics, like that has never really been Game Freak or the Pokemon games like focus, even on the 3DS or the DS you know, they've never been technical showcases and um, it's just never been a priority for them. And so I think like to expect them to make it a priority is right. just un- an unrealistic expectation. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll only unrealistic, though, from history, though, like not unrealistic from like just knowing what we know about the way the games sell and like what the market, um, you know, would want. I, I guess the the opposite is also true, is that like the market will also support you know, Pokemon games that aren't uh, powerhouses and, uh, you know, graphical showcases because it always has. Yeah, I guess I guess I feel like uh, we sometimes we don't give Game Freak enough credit or the Pokemon company enough credit for what they're willing to try. Yeah. Um, but the the main generations have been very slow to, you know, like make changes for sure. And then both the uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus We'll get Pokemon Bank support in 2022. That was kind of like the last bullet point from the Pokemon Presents presentation. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't get the like big confusing web of like how you can transfer oh my Pokemon gosh, from yeah. this to this. Um, but I will be interested to see how the uh, Legends Arceus uh, Pokemon can be traded like outside of that game 
uh like will they be tradable to sword and shield to be used in like tournament play or you know like what there, there's so much like official pokemon stuff to consider uh with any of these new releases that like it, it'll be fascinating to see uh which of these games or like how you can use those pokemon in official capacities totally because it used to be so easy where it was just like yeah like pokemon from th- the first generation go to the second and so on and so yeah. forth and now it really is kind of like a web of what pokemon can be transferred where yep. and when and all that kind of stuff because also you got go and let's go in there and like they they're all they're all different and they all you know represent different investments of time and money to get them so yeah it's it, it, it'll be fascinating to see what that web looked like when they release it Last week at QuakeCon, Machine Games and id Software stealth released a visually enhanced version of the original Quake on Switch, Ooh. PC, Xbox, and PlayStation to celebrate the game's 25th anniversary. It includes The release includes two classic expansion pla- packs, plus two new ones developed by Machine Games, four-player online um, for the campaign mode, split-screen co-op locally, support for curated fan-made mods, even on Switch, Eight player multiplayer wow. matches online with crossplay, four player multiplayer matches locally, gyro aiming assist on the, um, or not assist, gyro aiming option on the Switch, all for 10 bucks. Um, this sounds like such a love letter to the original Quake, which is a game that I n- have n- never really played. Like the Quake that I played the most was one that was released on like the PlayStation 3 that I would play with my friend. Um, oh, wild. Pat- Patrick, have you ever, d- did you ever play a lot of Quake? No, Quake was one of those, because it's a first person shooter, right? Right. Yeah. So Qu- Quake was one of those games that was like around at the same time as like Doom and uh, like Duke Nukem um, 3D back in the day. Um, and it was just not, the-, the other two were on my radar and it wasn't. Um, but for 10 bucks and all of these, uh, all these like uh, other features, that sounds like an interesting package. Didn't they also announce uh, just this week that there is a like Doom package being released for Switch? That's like Doom, Doom Two, Doom Sixty Four. Yeah, there is, there is. Um, in I think like the there's going to be a physical edition, and so it includes Doom Twenty Sixteen, and then yeah. like you said, it includes Doom One, Doom Two, Doom Sixty Four. I don't and think Doom Three. It, right? it probably includes Doom Three. It probably yeah. includes all of them. Uh, the physical package is just going to be the doom 2016 on the cart and then the rest of yeah. them are downloadable but yeah i i don't know first i throw this kind of into the same category as the um uh blizzard arcade collection where it's like yeah. i think it's fun when these uh classic games kind of get this the star treatment and it's not just like you know um a rom that gets put out or anything it's like right. uh, treated like uh, an important part of a company's history. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's very cool. We we're approaching Game Gamescom's opening night live event, and host Jeff Keeley has been teasing announcements and games that are going to be featured during it. And I'm so excited because Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga has been promised to be there, and uh, very exciting. It's been a game a few years in the making. It's had the release pushed back a couple of times. Will we get a release date finally? Um, that would be cool. If it came out this holiday season, that would be oh awesome. My God. I mean, it was originally supposed to be out last holiday season, right? You, you and I saw this game at E3 2019. <laughs> um, and then it was uh, slated to be out for holiday uh, last year and then was later bumped to like April. And then coming up to April, they were like, nope, not going to make that either. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's almost no way it comes out this year, but like, you know, we're still just in August. They could reasonably announce it for like November or something. Um, but whenever it comes out, I'm I'm so excited to see more of this game. Yeah. I mean, do you remember like months ago when they were kind of, you know, like doing a lot of PR for it, thinking that it yeah. was going to be released in just a few um, shortly after they were doing all this PR, they were talking about like the hundreds of playable characters that they are. I think yeah. Yaddle is in it um so oh speaking of which did you see there there was a uh a, a comic maybe it was um the uh star wars high republic adventures comic but yada like speaks in it and she speaks normal she doesn't speak like backwards like yoda i knew it i knew it i knew that yoda <laughs> was just screwing around he's just messing with people 
I watch, uh, there's this Star Wars channel on YouTube that I watch uh, called Star Wars Explained. And he yeah. was joking that maybe like uh, when Yoda was really young in school, he just like accidentally misspoke and everyone laughed. <laughs> so to like try to like spin it, he's like, no, no, that's just how we speak on my planet. <laughs> how we speak this is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but I, got, I got I got to throw the brakes up here, though. Is it, uh, are you saying Yaddle or Yaddle? What? How how is how is her name pronounced? <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. know. I've always okay. said I don't. I guess I don't know why. I've always said Yaddle, like Yo. No, not like Yoda. I don't know. I don't know how it's pronounced. What do you say? Do you say? I think I say Yaddle, but Yaddle. I also don't. I don't speak the character's name that frequently. <laughs> <laughs> we just know it in our hearts. However, <laughs> yeah, you choose right. to that's celebrate right. Yaddle or Yaddle um, is okay by us. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to Gamescom. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge has, quote, an announcement and world premiere new look. So I just wanted to pause on that world premiere new look, because what does that mean? Is that just a new look at the game? They're premiering, like, new footage from the game? Um, Calling it a world premiere new look implies to me that is, like, a new art style or something like that. Um, But that doesn't seem too likely, because... Part of the appeal is that it looks like the 87 cartoon and the um, the video games that came out on the NES and, and Super NES and Arcade. Yeah, my guess is that it's a play on like first look, how sometimes they're like, oh, this is your first look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. It's like, this is a new look. It's like another trailer, another like thing for it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I wonder if we'll get a uh, release date for that one, too. This, I, I, both of these games are games I absolutely cannot wait for. I'm so excited for them. Finally, uh, I saw today on Twitter video game history chronicler Jeremy Parrish of Retronauts, um, Game Boy Works, NES Works, etc. He shared a YouTube video from someone named Carl Jobst about the recent run of record-breaking video game auctions, which we have covered on this site or this store store no this show <laughs> there we go that we've covered on it. Thi- that, yeah <laughs> third try that we've covered on this show um you know there was like the legend of zelda and uh super mario 64 that sold for millions of dollars which is way more than video games had ever sold for and it's like the video is about 50 minutes and i listened to it in the background while uh working so i'm sure there's like some like nuances and cl- that I missed, but the short of it is, is that it is based on uh, this person's research. It is very likely that what we're seeing here is a coordinated effort uh, by a small handful of people, including like the auction site, including the company who um, is rating these like games. That they are all kind of the same network of people. Oh, and, interesting. And it, with the goal to drive speculation in video game collecting to create a bubble and make money. Like, literally, literally, this person finds that the same people did this with coins in the 80s and, like, paid a mil- like a million dollar fine with the Federal Trade Commission over doing the same thing. The, somebody involved has done, allegedly done something very similar with comic books where basically he, like, uh buys a comic book and then a few years go by puts it out on the market bids it up himself and then takes it off the market and then waits a few years and does it again to like continually try to like validate how much this thing is like worth by inflating it it is wild i will uh, i'll post the link to the video in the show notes it's super super interesting and i am it it is crazy how after this person like put it all together that um how blatant it is yeah that makes a lot of sense mark i believe this uh this is my area 51 this is my you know jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams like i think this is right yeah i I, and the thing is it's not even like a crazy like conspiracy like it is like almost so blatant that it is amazing that these people are getting away with it yeah well and that uh you know the rest of us slack jawed yokels are just like Wow, them video games are selling for a lot. Well, and that's the other thing in the in the video he talks about how like these articles are reprinted without any like critical look at it. Like the people yeah. they're getting quotes from are heritage auctions, are the uh the people who are rating the games, which is it is in their best interest 
to hype how like hot the video game collecting market is, even though it's all a bubble. It's crazy. It is so worth listening to. It's also so smart because like in uh, in the comics market and in like collectible coins market and of course in video games, those are all audiences that have chips on their shoulders. So they will be uh, so ready to defend like, yes, of course that game is valuable. It is an important part of the history of whatever medium or hobby that I'm a part of. Um, like there's, they have to be pretty selectively chosen targets to, uh, you know, fly under the radar of like manipulating those, uh, those bubbles. Yeah. And it's crazy that like, uh, it's not video game collectors who are like buying this stuff. It is, um, you know, just like people who are looking at it as an investment or as a, you know, like, uh, part of a larger get rich scheme. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's really interesting because I was definitely one of those people who was, you know, just reading the headlines being like, wow, yeah, that's crazy. Course. But like knowing more about what's behind it, it's, it was, I found it very, very fascinating. Mark, I think we actually learned something today. <laughs> which, and maybe taught something real today, which is a, a, a re- remarkable. Do not expect us to do it again. No. All right, Mark, <laughs> let's get out of the news. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts if you like the episode. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you share stuff. Um, We appreciate it when you do that quite a bit. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nin Cart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. From my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening. Oscar, Rachel, do you like Disney movies? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen all of them? Yeah, we saw all the Disney animated movies. And we saw all the Pixar animated movies, too. How about the DCOMs? What? What? The Disney Channel original movies. You should listen to our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault, because we are watching all of them in chronological order. Yeah, and we do fun segments, like we cast each other. That's right, and my favorite segment, Zaddy Watch, where we rank every single DCOM daddy. Ooh, you can listen to all this fun stuff on our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault on Campfire Media, wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, guys, let's get back in the vault. It's cold out here. Campfire.